Welcome back everybody to Criminal Law. In this lesson we're continuing talking about the elements of criminal liability, focusing now in more detail on the idea of actus reus, the first of the major elements, the idea of a guilty act. We're going to explore a number of different issues pertaining to the idea of the actus reus within this lesson, picking up on what we did in the previous lesson, which was introducing the subject of criminal liability, looking at the various elements of, of a crime, which ultimately are required to show liability in question. So we talked, for example, the idea of the actus reus in an offence, the idea of a mens rea, and the lack of a valid defence, being the most uh, common uh, equation, shall we say, for the establishment of criminal liability. I also preface the fact that we are going to talk about strict liability in more detail in future lessons, and so that, that sort of skews the extent to which mens rea is uh, particularly important in those particular offences. This lesson, like I said, is going to look in more detail at the first of these major elements, talking about the idea of actus reus within criminal law. I'm going to talk about actus reus for a few lessons. We're going to talk about it in its general form in this video, and then we'll start to talk about some of the subsidiary issues which relate to actus reus, talking, for example, about the concept of criminal intent, talking about the concept of of uh, omissions versus acts and the type of offences that can exist in that regard and talking about the idea of causation the idea that the act itself causes the harm for which criminal liability arises so like i've said fundamentally the concept of actus reus is the most important part of criminal liability because if you don't have and you cannot show that there was a guilty act you cannot show that there was a guilty individual. You cannot show that there was criminal liability at all. And the reason for this is because a lack of the actus reus, even if you have a prerequisite and you can show quite clearly that they have a, a strong mens rea, it means that the individual cannot have actually committed an unlawful act. And so this sort of goes into, uh, dates back to the idea of the fact that uh, whereas in some circumstances and in some types of criminal offences, you are not, uh, sorry, you are liable um, even if you do not have the prerequisite mens rea. So the idea of, 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 of strict liability, for example, when it comes to the actus reus, that is a requirement for any circumstance within a crime. Um, you have to have committed an act in order for this to be unlawful. Or, alternatively, you have to have uh, omitted to perform a particular action such that criminal liability arises. You can still have liability for omissions. The point is that you have to have either done something or been so negligent in not doing something that liability arises. Ultimately, there has to be a physical thing that happens in order for you to have committed an unlawful act. And so in addition to this, one cannot be convicted for simply just having a guilty mind. I might think in some circumstances that I want to kill an individual, um, but if I don't do it, then I cannot be convicted of murder, for example. This is illustrated very clearly in the case of R. and Della um, from 1952. In terms of the facts of this case, I'll, I'll run through them quite quickly. Ultimately, the defendant was uh, making an arrangement to to sell a car, to make a sale on a on a vehicle, and the aim here uh, essentially was to do uh, and claim that the car uh, had not had any kind of financial uh, obligations that were outstanding attached to it. So uh, the aim was to sell the car uh, while falsely making the statement that there was no outstanding financial obligations, when in reality the defendant had taken a mortgage out on the car uh, to a finance company. And so as a result of which was, was, was committing some kind of fraudulent act in doing so. Um, but in reality, and without the defendant's knowledge, in fact, the agreement that was made, uh, the agreement to, make the more, to take the mortgage out with the finance company, was actually void. And it had been void, meaning that there were no outstanding financial obligations on the vehicle. So he was making this claim that there were no outstanding uh, financial obligations on the vehicle. He believed that he was acting fraudulently, but in fact, he was just telling the truth. There weren't any outstanding financial obligations on the vehicle. And so when he was prosecuted for obtaining, uh, for essentially, for the, the offence of attain, obtaining by false uh, pretenses, which is just sort of a an old-fashioned uh, way of saying fraud, um, he was unable to have any criminal liability owing to the fact that he didn't actually commit a criminal offence. And so this um, 
this essentially solidifies the fact that while he had the prerequisite mens rea, he went out and he fully intended on committing fraud in this instance or committing obtainment by false pretenses. Um, he he did not actually do so. And so he can only have had a guilty mind. He did not have the prerequisite mens rea. And so he could not be found guilty of that particular offence. When we think about the actus reus, uh, we think about this idea that a person ought to have done the thing in question uh, in such a way that was voluntary. So actus reus will require that the act is done um, and is done so voluntarily. And this relates to this idea of voluntariness, uh, voluntary, uh, voluntariness. <laughs> and the idea here is that if an individual has committed an offence and has committed an act, but not done so um, using their own free will and under their own uh, physical capabilities, then no criminal liability may be able to occur. Take, for example, the case here of uh, Bratty and the Attorney General of Northern Ireland from 1963. Um, this is the a passage that it comes out of that particular judgment. They say here that the requirement that it um, that it the murder, should I say, that the 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 idea of the offence itself that was that was in question on, in this particular case should be voluntary, should be a voluntary act, is essential not only in a murder case but also in every criminal case. No act is punishable if it is done involuntarily and an involuntary act in this context means an act which is done by the muscles without any control by the mind such as a spasm a reflex or a convulsion or an act done by a person who is not conscious of what he is doing uh, such as an act done while suffering from a concussion so for example if an individual um, has muscle spasms and they accidentally slip and maybe accidentally slip and, and, and hit an individual in the face or punch an individual in the face they cannot therefore be uh, charged with uh, with an assault or battery or, or an abh for example because of the fact that it was done by uh, a reflex or a convulsion or a muscle spasm it was done not voluntarily it was done just as a sort of muscle uh, uh, spasm that had no connection to the mind itself and a similar way if you are done if you do something while you're unconscious then again you you cannot be considered to have um, committed an offense you may think for those who have already gone through some of the criminal law stuff already that this pertains to a particular defense within uh, within criminal law uh, a particular capacity defense called automatism and and you'd be right this idea of automatism uh, fits very much within this idea of involuntarily making uh, and doing a particular act which could give rise to criminal liability there are plenty of examples that exist for uh, for instance when we talk about um, the idea of um, when certain individuals play rugby and they get hit in a particular way uh, they can sometimes continue running while completely unconscious and then run into another individual if that happens that individual cannot be criminally liable for that particular uh, offense uh, and so as a result of which you make the argument that um, they can be uh, at least there could be the defense of automatism in that regard in some circumstances when we think about looking at a delineation between the actus reus and the mens rea of an offence, this isn't necessarily always clear cut. In some offences, you can take a statute, you can take a provision within a statute, you can just read it down, and you can almost have two highlighters. You can have an actus reus highlighter, and you can have a mens rea highlighter. And you can sort of highlight where the actus reus exists uh, within that offence, and then you can then highlight where the mens rea exists in that offence. And I would recommend for anyone who is studying criminal law uh, in those circumstances to actually do so, because that's a very good way of being able to make a clear division um, within the criminal law. And especially when you have problem questions, it's good to unpick and unpack the actus reus and the mens rea elements to then apply both of them individually into the circumstances of the particular problem question. Now, there are some instances, however, where this is not always clear cut, and it can be argued, for example, that in some offences, uh, the actus reus includes mental elements. And a prime example here is the crime of burglary, um, because this is an offence which requires an actus reus, which requires trespass to land, for example. But it also requires something else. It requires that there has to be an intent to commit further offences. And this is, of course, the intent to commit theft. And this is connected to this idea of trespass to land. So you have an instance here where we have trespass to land in and of itself um, isn't burglary. 
and, and so the, if there isn't an intention on the part of the trespasser to then go on to steal or, or to commit theft, then uh, there is no uh, mental uh, mens rea element, but there's also no actus reus element for the crime of burglary. So you have an instance here where the trespass in question, the act, in, the act itself, has to be done so with an intent to commit further offences. So this clear dividing line that exists between the actus reus and the mens rea isn't always so clear cut. It isn't always so easy to make this delineation. In a lot of offences it is, but in some cases it is not.